Okay, so the last step in the whole open house process is your post open house activity. So we got a bit of a checklist and some ideas on how to maintain connections with people that you meet that might want to work with you. So first thing we do when you're done with the open house is to return the house to its original condition. Secure windows, close blinds, if you've opened up doors into the garage or the backyard, make sure you put it back the way you found it. Do not leave an open house with all the windows and lights on and so forth. Leave it the way you found it. If they're your sellers, if the sellers happen to come home before you leaving, you can brief them. You know, if the sellers arrive and it's not your open house, then you know you can give them a brief overview. But let them know that the professional thing to do is to call the agent. Let them know you're going to call their agent and provide that feedback. And you know, you, until you were able to talk to agents that uh, folks that showed up and, and follow up with some of the buyers, you're you're not really or the prospects, you're not really sure exactly what you have. But you can certainly give people an idea of how it went, how many people showed through, and etc. Then next, collect your signs, secure the home, collect your signs. Hopefully you still have all your signs. Uh, as I mentioned, unfortunately, some of them do go missing or you'll find that some of them have been knocked over. And then it's time to do the post open house connections, I like to call it. So first thing, put the folks into your CRM. Now, if you're using an open house app, what the cool thing is, if it's tied to your lead generation platform, it's going to create uh, already a, a person, you know, a contact in your database for you, in your CRM. And then it, you can also attach that to a follow-up campaign with texts and emails and so forth. I like the touch of doing a, a personal note if you did get the person's uh, home address or if they own a home, you can look that information up. Send a thank you email or a text or even a video text would be a great thing because hopefully you do have their phone number because you've hopefully shared your app or uh, got a permission to follow up with them for search alerts and so forth. So send that thank you for visiting. Now you're gonna go ahead and put them on any search alerts on, in your website. And I like using my website if they're way down the road a little bit because people like to control their searching and search alerts that come from your IDX website will drive people back to your site, hopefully off of Zillow and the others, where they'll get those alerts saying, here's a new property that meets your criteria it'll drive them back where they can go people just like to look at houses you do it in the mls in my opinion when they're really closer to looking and they're serious about going out and looking at homes with you and that's a one way right you know they're you're, you're sending them the links and there's not really an active search generally some of the mls's have it but you want people on your site until you're ready to go out and actually show them homes in your CRM, you want to schedule that next call. So if you did get their information and they told you they're six months out, I would still 30, 45 days schedule a call to follow up. Things change, their time frames might have changed. So remember, always best practices in your CRM, schedule the next contact. Put them on any kind of automated buyer campaign that you have with informative emails about the buying process. You know, that's We'll talk about that in the buyer module. Um, what, what kind of things should you follow up with people? whether you're, they're a lead from anywhere, including an open house, I would put them on your monthly local market newsletter that you're doing monthly. And, uh, you know, if they have a home to sell, add them to your automated market report, offer to do a market analysis. And then, of course, last thing, you're going to invite them to future open houses as applicable, right? As they, if the home, that the next open house you have meets their criteria, Invite them, even if it doesn't invite them anyway. And that's all part of things that we talked about during this module. Okay, that's it. We walked you through the mindset, everything you need to do to get prepared, promote, select, conduct an open house, live and virtual, in person and virtual, uh, all the way down to uh, right where we are right now, which is let's get to work. So join me. And I'll bring it all together and give you your action items for open houses and how to make them work for you. We'll see you in the final lesson.